Our final speaker today is Sean Ratty, is from First Baptist in Mooresville. Jesus spoke from the cross, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Sean. Thank you, then. And today we finish with Luke 23, 46. And it says, Then Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Now these are powerful words to end on, and not just because they fulfill the prophecies and Psalms, but because this is the moment in time when there is a new avenue and doorway opened for people to connect and to reach God in heaven. Metaphorically, this is the time when we see Jesus go from being a window, so an opening for people who were at the time able to hear him speak about heaven and get glimpses of heaven, of God's wisdom, and of God in flesh. And he becomes a doorway, creating the one and only path for which we can reach it. And this final passage is more than just the words that are said. It's an action. And both the words and the actions have to be considered with great cause. So let's begin with the words themselves. Father, into your hands I commit, commend my spirit. In religious and historical context, these words have significant meaning because it helps to validify that Christ is the Savior of humanity. This line directly parallels a moment in Psalms 31.5, which says, Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. And as we know, Psalms was one of the most important connections that allows us to predict what eventually happened on the cross and with the sacrifice. But what I found actually particularly interesting as I was reading this passage actually had to do with the actual title of this particular passage. And the title of this part of Psalms is A Prayer and Praise for Deliverance of Enemies. And how amazing and perfect are those words and that title. We're in a moment where Jesus is being crucified by his enemies who put him on the cross meant to basically look at him and discredit him and to silence him. But by putting him there, they in fact validify everything he has said and everything he is. So rather than discrediting him, they end up supporting the meaning and what he was. And what is nice about this is that there is eventually a deliverance from his enemies. For shortly after he spoke this quote, he was able to breathe his last, and his spirit was reconnected with God above, and his enemies could no longer harm him. Looking back on the original Greek of this passage, I actually didn't find quite as much as I was hoping for, many unique things about the passage. Uh, to be honest, most of it's pretty straightforward in terms of translation. But there was one word which stood out to me above the rest, and that I want to focus on today. And that word was commend. And the reason this stood out to me is because commend was the only word in this passage as I was looking at different translations and different interpretations that was occasionally changed or substituted for another word, and that was commit. Now commit didn't feel like the right word here to me, and these two words have very different definitions, especially in this context. So I wanted to go back and take a look at what was it that Jesus said and what he meant in that final line, as well as what was Luke trying to convey as he wrote this final transcript of what happened on the cross in those final moments. So the original scripture, the Greek word that was used here, is paratithame. That is comprised of two Greek words, para, which means by the side of or beside, and tithame, which is to place or set. So the best translation we have here is to place beside or set before. Now, commit means to promise. You make a promise of something that you're either going to do or maybe something you're going to believe, like I commit to a healthy lifestyle or I'm committed to a cause. But commit doesn't feel like it grasps the full sense of the action that's here. It doesn't feel like it's the right word. It is absolutely true that Jesus committed himself to God's plan to God's word, and to the salvation of humanity. But he was given several opportunities to even walk away 
before he got to this point in the cross. There were times where he was tempted by Satan himself that you see in, say, Luke 4 or Matthew 4. And there were times where he was given an opportunity to escape the arrest at the time by his own disciples who were willing to protect him after he told them what was going to happen to him next and as he was being arrested. They were willing to save him and get him out of there all the way until the end if all he had to do was give the word. But I believe that by Jesus being on the cross and at this moment, he is showing his commitment to God's plan. Whereas commend is to present oneself, it is to hand something over, and it is to place it with something else, which feels a lot more accurate to the interpretation we have here. Jesus was already committed to God, and what his final words is really trying to reflect was his willingness to give up his spirit and hand it over a lot more accurately in terms of commend over commit, because he is putting his spirit beside his Father in heaven. And we later even see this properly reflected during the stoning of Stephen in Acts 7, 57, which says, Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. So Jesus had commended his spirit to be with his Father once he knew his commitments were finished. And his final words also parallel Jesus' commitment to being a faithful son, as we heard earlier when we saw the passage where he spoke to his mother. We saw how Christ remained committed to his parents with his mother, that even in his final moments as his time was winding down, he is looking to his mother and taking care of, he is committing to being able to follow his father's, uh, honor his father, and follow his father's wishes for him. He followed his father's commands until the very end, and when it was completed, he gave his spirit to him. It is fair to say that with all the final words we hear here today, that he was speaking selflessly each time, putting the betterment of others before himself, and promises that he committed to finishing before he ended it. Now we have the grace of hindsight these days to know what these words meant and what it does for us all these years later. And we know what those actions and words have opened up a new path for all of us that have saved billions of people by creating a way for them to... But to many of them, this sounded like an admission of defeat. That perhaps Jesus was giving up and just accepting death. It was true. Jesus had accepted death. But he did it in triumph not in defeat. But to many of those who were probably there that day and saw what happened and saw these events that occur, this was just a sign of defeat. They were expecting Jesus to be a king on earth, not just a heavenly king. And as the few days that had followed occurred, many of his followers felt defeated. Some had fled the area right after it happened. There are some, I'm sure, who as they saw Christ die on the cross, they may have even given up their belief entirely believing that with his death, that was the end. And even the apostles were wandering aimlessly with uncertainty, because even though they were told what was going to happen by Jesus himself. But they weren't there at the graveside. They weren't protecting it. They weren't ensuring that nobody was going to uh, disturb his body whatsoever. And they weren't there to see if he would return. In fact, when several witnesses came to the apostles and told them that Christ had resurrected, it is said even in Luke 24, 11, that, But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. His final words had sounded like defeat even to them. And they had been shown who he really was as they wandered aimlessly and distraught to the point that when Jesus himself had actually returned, he had to go to them. He had to show them who he really was. And he had to inspire them to go out and to spread his word. And again, he predicted this to them. They knew beforehand. And even Peter, who had been amazed at that point about the accuracy of Jesus' predictions of his own denials, and the fact that these men had gone on for years traveling with Jesus and seen the miracles he had done in all this time, they could not fathom what these final words meant and what this final action had meant at the time. This kind of shows how words, context can, in the words, can have a great impact on those who hear them. 
Did any other man at any other moment in time who was up on that cross, these would have been his final words. That's it. But, and if it had been any other man, that would have been the end. But it was Jesus. And Jesus was not any other man. He was God incarnate. He was the only person who could go on that cross and at that moment before fully understood. Many people believed it was the end, but we now have the knowledge of knowing that this is not the day where things end on that Friday many years ago. He had asked at one point, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But now at the end, he says, it is finished. No longer is he forsaken. Instead, we are forgiven. Our sins have been paid for, and now he is going back to the Father, just as he spoke in his final line. So as we go on, on this Good Friday, and what seems like a rather somber note, let us not forget that this is, in fact, a Good Friday. While things at the time may seem as if they were at their worst, it is through faith that we know the truth and we know the meaning behind the actions that were done on this particular day. And it may seem more true now as we're going through our struggles in this year with a lot of unique circumstances that we didn't have to deal with before. But as we reconvene on Easter Sunday, whether with our families at home or with our church families online, let us be able to reflect on what these final seven lines said by Christ on the cross have meant the profound meaning it has on our lives. And let us celebrate the miracle that has brought all of us together as believers. Thank you.